Hello, welcome to the Rocky Mountain Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us this evening. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. Use the Q&A button on your screen. Type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your cameras and microphones are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening. There's an event next week, so be sure to sign up for more sessions if you haven't done so already at the same place you signed up for this one. And this presentation is being recorded. It'll be available within about a week, strivescan.com slash R-M-A-C-A-C. All right, I've gotten the housekeeping stuff out of the way, so I'm going to get out of the way and let's, let us get to the good stuff here and hear from our first presenter, which is the University of British Columbia. Hey, thank you so much. Let's share my screen here. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Shajida Hussain and I am a recruitment and advising officer at the University of British Columbia. And today I'm going to talk to you about UBC in terms of its academic excellence, campuses and student involvement so that you can determine if UBC is the right fit for you. So we are a public research university with two campuses in British Columbia, Canada. We have over 260 undergraduate majors to choose from and are consistently ranked among the top 40 research universities in the world and one of the top three universities within Canada. And students and for students in the United States, Canada is a great international choice that's still pretty close to home. So UBC has also been ranked as the most international university in North America, which means that you'll be part of this global community of over 18,000 international students that come from more than 160 different countries. And you'll have the opportunity to share your classrooms, campus with students from all over the world and gain a truly global perspective. So we have two campuses. UBC's Vancouver campus is in the city of Vancouver and UBC's Okanagan campus is in the city of Kelowna. These campuses are about four hours apart. So you apply to and take all of your courses at one campus or the other. And regardless of which campus you attend, you will graduate with the same UBC degree that is recognized worldwide. In terms of our Vancouver campus, it's in the city of Vancouver, a city of about two and a half million people. It's a vibrant multicultural city located on the Pacific Ocean and surrounded by picturesque mountains, as you can see in the picture there. The campus is 20 minutes from the city center and is located on the traditional ancestral and unceded territory of the Musqueam people and is home to approximately 45,000 undergraduate students. It's a pretty self-contained campus community with state-of-the-art facilities, sports fields, museums, restaurants, and theaters. There's always something to keep you busy on campus or in the city. So it's not really surprising that the city of Vancouver is regularly ranked as one of the most livable cities in the world. Now, maybe you would prefer more of a mid-sized campus, and if so, UBC's Okanagan campus in the city of Kelowna may be the right option for you. So Kelowna's population is just under 200,000 people, and it's one of the fastest growing cities in British Columbia and is home to a thriving billion dollar tech industry. If you're interested in technology, business and entrepreneurship, and perhaps combining those areas with some other academic areas that you're interested in, the Okanagan campus is a great place to do that. It's situated within the territory of the Silks Okanagan Nation. UBC's Okanagan campus is home to just under 10,000 undergraduate students. And the campus has small class sizes, unique campus city partnerships, and more than 1,000 research projects underway. And is a great fit for anyone looking for a world-class education in natural surroundings at a mid-sized campus. But of course, the university is more than its location and UBC has so many opportunities for you to take advantage of. You'll be part, um, you'll be encouraged actually to expand your horizons and find your path at UBC. And there's lots of different ways to do this. And I encourage you to explore some of these areas. So for example, there is research if you want to get involved in academic research, perhaps work with a professor, publish or present at conferences. There are awards that you can apply to to actually fund your research. Work experience I'll talk about in just a moment. Athletics and recreation, if you wanna play varsity or intramural clubs, there's over 400 to join clubs and associations and Go Global, which is our study abroad program. About 20% of our students will do a study abroad program. And we have over 200 partnerships around the world. So one highlight is our cooperative education program, which is an option for students in nearly all of our undergraduate programs. Co-op is the opportunity to take what you have been learning in the classroom and research labs and apply it to the real world through full-time paid internships. 
Thousands of students participate in co-op placements each year with companies such as Adidas, Electronic Arts, Microsoft, Disney, and Lululemon, just to name a few. And in fact, 90% of UBC students who participate in the co-op program receive a job offer within about one month of graduation. Now, in terms of academics, UBC offers over 260 undergraduate majors. We offer degrees in fields such as liberal arts, business, and STEM. We also have some unique and niche programs in applied biology, kinesiology, forestry, and more. So if you think that UBC is the right fit for you, you'll want to start an application. First, you'll want to choose your campus and program and check the admission requirements for that program. Our deadline to apply is January 15th. And after you apply, you'll be able to upload your transcripts and required documents. We look at two things. We look at your personal profile as well as your academics. So admissions is both com comparative and competitive. Your UBC application will be evaluated on a combination of your academic performance and personal profile. And your personal profile is really your chance to tell the university what you're most proud of, what is most important to you, and what you have learned from your experiences. A few programs may require portfolio or supplemental application. UBC also wants to see that you have challenged yourself by taking rigorous curriculum at your school, such as honors, AP, IB, or college level courses. So thanks for learning more about UBC. Make sure you bookmark our website, yru.ubc.ca. Our website has a lot of information I covered today, as well as further details about requirements, tuition and scholarships, and much more. And I also encourage you to book a live virtual tour, and that way you can see the campus and connect with current UBC students. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions for our representatives, use the Q&A button. You can do that at any time. Also check out the chat in case the representatives send you any information that way. Up next, we will hear from Falmouth University. Hi everyone, my name is Jackie Christopher and I'm development manager um, for Falmouth University. And Falmouth University is a creative industries university. So what does that mean is we give you that hands-on experience as soon as you arrive on campus. Um, so you're getting that professional industries, um, facilities, um, equipment, um, in-person lectures and the skills for you to have the confidence to graduate um, into industry. So we were established in 1902 as a school of art and we gained university status in 2012. We're a small, medium sized university with approximately 5,000 5, students. But what is the interesting thing is we're the second largest um, university, creative arts university in the UK. Um, and because we have approximately 5,000 students, um, you get that personal attention. So um, the average class size is around 15 students per class. We have two campuses, 15 to 20 minutes apart by bus. All students can access facilities on both campuses for cross-departmental projects. And we're number one in the UK for graduates starting or running their own um, business. We actually have 23% of our Falmouth graduates actually um, doing freelance or starting their own company, which is amazing. And we're the second safest university in England and Wales. So our location, we're located in Cornwall, England. It's a beautiful touristy county um, in Southwest England. Um, it's very picturesque, harbor right by the sea. Um, it's known for surfing, sailing, hiking, and so much more. So if you're a very active student, this is a great location. Um, we have a vibrant student life. The closest airport is New Key, which is about 40 minutes away from Falmouth. We're approximately five hours away from London by train. Um, and we do offer an airport collection service offered to all first year international students. And if you are worried about finances or anything, life in Falmouth is very affordable. So Cornwall is one of the cheapest counties to live in the UK. Transport, transport and entertainment are affordable. And if you are worried about jobs, well, this because it's a touristic county, um, there's so many jobs available, um, such as hotels, bars, cafes, restaurants, and attractions. Um, and because um, when you're on a student visa, you can work up to 20 hours a week during term time. During non-term time, you can work up to 40 hours a week. But if you don't want to work um, in town, no problem. The university also employs students on a part-time basis and you can work at cafeterias, cafes, and so much more. And we have nine diverse departments on the creative industries. 
Um, School of Entrepreneurship, we are, even though this is a creative arts university, School of Entrepreneurship does bring that creative arts into um, the entrepreneurship program, um, especially because we are such an industry focused university and students do a lot of freelance. We're, we're big on entrepreneurship. Um, fashion and textiles, games academy, and a few others. And these are all the programs that we have available at Falmouth. Um, just to tell you, um, with our photography department, um, we have a lecturer who uh, used to be the director of photography for the New York Post and the New York Times. And she has said that our equipment is, you know, top notch facility, um, what professionals use. Um, and for the Games Academy, we are actually 39th in the world and we are six outside of the US. So we have, um, and we're one of the largest gaming um, departments in the UK. And these are just some of other, our um, other programs available in other departments. And um, we are, because we're in England, we offer three-year bachelor's degrees, but we do offer a few two-year bachelor's degrees. You just don't have those winter and the summers off. Um, and they are only for our entrepreneurship programs and just one drama um, program. Now, the four-year degrees are for students who haven't really built those skills in those programs. So we, it's an integrated foundation year. And the facilities, like I was saying, facilities at Falmouth are industry standard and very accessible. Students can borrow equipment for free in departmental stores. We have two libraries with IT suites, including 24 hour library on Penryn campus. And we have an on-campus art shop and students can order heavy materials um, to the campus as well. And because we are a creative arts university, we are, we're a vibrant creative community, very collaborative. Um, where you can work in teams, work individually, um, or, you know, work within other departments as well, which is very rare for a UK university. And the staff are very supportive to have those collaborative um, engagements and partnerships. And we offer workshop festivals as well, which is, um, you know, we have annually twice a year where you can dabble into different topics and skills. Um, uh, topics that develop your skills in certain areas that are outside of your degree. We have a careers campus um, on site as well. And our entry requirements, we have, um, we require high school transcript, personal statement, recommendation letter, but we do recommend um, the main source of our high school, um, our application is your portfolio and your interview and we do not require SATs, ACTs, or APs. If you have any other questions, I know I'm running a little bit short on time, please feel free to reach me. My email is below. You can apply via UCAS or our free online application. Thank you again, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you very much. And again, ask questions of any of our reps just by using the Q&A button. You can do that at any time. Up next, let's hear from Macquarie University, Sydney. Let me get organized. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining. My name is Leanne Allen and I represent Macquarie University, which is in Sydney, Australia. I am the regional director, North America and based in Los Angeles. Um, Sydney is a stunning city, as you can see from these images. Um, it is very multicultural as well. Australia's population is about 24 million, so a little different to the US. Macquarie University is a big public school, and as a student there, you get the best of both worlds, the big cosmopolitan city experience with the amazing beaches, as you can see here, and then retreat back to campus, which is a stunning parkland university. We have about 40,000 students on campus, and of that, there are 12,000 international students. So an incredibly diverse student population. Definitely one of my favorite things about the university as well. Um, the first photo there is our mascot, our Mac Warrior. We are named after the fifth governor of New South Wales, um, who was Scottish, hence why our mascot is in a Scottish quilt. Um, that second photo there is one of the two pools in our sports and aquatic center. Our weather does allow um, outdoor swimming pools. Um, if it's below 60 degrees in winter, we'll complain it's too cold. If it's above, 
90 degrees in summer will complain it's too warm or too hot um so we do like a very mild um temperate climate that isn't too humid either um if you do want to see snow you certainly can it's about a three hour drive out of sydney to get to the ski mountains um as you would expect from a u.s campus we certainly have a very similar experience we have all the clubs and associations and sports that you would expect as well big difference is the ncaa doesn't exist outside of the us but you can certainly play for the university at the australian university games if you would like to and i definitely recommend students joining as many clubs and associations as possible because it's a truly wonderful way to get engaged in the campus community that middle photo at the bottom there is our incubator, incubator hub, which is designed specifically for students who are entrepreneurial and have an idea that they want to grow um, into something larger. We also have a full orientation and we'll actually pick you up from the airport when you first arrive in Sydney and take you back for a week of um, getting to know campus before you actually start classes. Um, as Jackie mentioned, um, Australia is very similar in that we have three year degree programs. We don't have general education requirements in Australia. If you do wanna do a four year degree, that's perfectly okay. You just do a double degree. So that's for example, a bachelor of arts and a bachelor of commerce. And that's a great way to really explore different areas. If you're not really set on what you wanna study as you do need to apply to um, a specific degree when you make an application to Macquarie and an Australian university. Our most popular courses are our accounting and international business as well as business administration. We have really strong media and communications programs as well as our criminology, counterterrorism and intelligence studies. We specialize in software and telecommunications engineering too. Um, and we actually invented Wi-Fi, so you're welcome. Um, if you are into um, earth and environmental sciences, Sydney and Australia are a fabulous place to study that. It is very hands on, um, such as climate science, sustainability and our marine science programs. Um, and our flagship program, our Bachelor of Clinical Science Doctor of Medicine degree is a six year degree program out of high school, um, which allows you to become a doctor at the end of the program. Um, we do have on campus accommodation options. Um, and there's quite a few different options depending on what kind of lifestyle you would like. Generally, you will have your own bedroom and you may have your own bathroom. Um, we do have meal plans, but it is associated with the accommodation. So you'll need to choose one that offers a meal plan if you would like that. Um, accommodation is not guaranteed or compulsory, but as long as you apply early, you shouldn't have any problem getting accommodation on campus. Being um, an international school, students often think that it must be really expensive, but it isn't that bad compared to a lot of schools here in the States. Our average tuition is about $24,000, but it does change a little bit on what you wanna study. We generally recommend that students have access to about $15,000 to live comfortably in Australia as well, which comes to about $40,000 in total. And do keep in mind, it is generally a three year degree program. So you're saving yourself a year of studying and a year of paying tuition and hopefully within that that fourth year you'll actually be entering the workforce and getting gaining money or earning money as opposed to paying for an additional year. You can work in Australia, minimum wage is about $19 an hour. You are able to use US financial aid if you choose to and we do have merit-based scholarships available to students. Um, it's a really straightforward process to apply to the university. It is free to apply and it should take you only about 10, 15 minutes to complete the application. You just sub, uh, submit an application through our website, um, upload your passport and your transcripts. Um, and we are currently test optional due to COVID-19. So you're welcome or not to submit those scores. It's very much an academic based process though. So we, um, we don't require essays or recommendation letters. Once you submit a full application, it generally takes about two weeks to get an outcome and hopefully you get a full offer with condition of successfully finishing high school. From there, you can accept your place in the program, pay the deposit, um, purchase your overseas healthcare insurance, which covers you for the full duration of your studies in Australia, apply for your visa, book flights, and join us in Sydney. Being in the Southern Hemisphere, our dates are a tiny bit different. Um, we commence in the February and July semester over each year, and we do have a smaller intake in November where some classes are available. Um, it's about 50-50 as to when students do start the program. So um, you are very welcome to start in the July intake. It's about six weeks from finishing high school um, or you can defer until the February, no problem at all. That is it from me. Thanks so much for joining. Um, this is my contact details. I would be more than happy to answer any questions and welcome you to Sydney. Thank you very much. And again, you can ask questions if you're live right now using the Q&A button. Do that to any, for any of our presenters.
Up next, we'll hear from John Cabot University. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Ramsey. I'm an admissions counselor for John Cabot University, which is an American university in Rome. Um, and I actually graduated from here close to four years ago. So if you guys have any questions about either of those things, please let me know. But yeah, let's jump right into it. So John Cabot, we're, we're a pretty small school. Uh, we're just over a thousand students in non-COVID times. We're around 1400, but right now we're just over a thousand and we have students from over 70 countries. So it's a very multicultural environment, constantly meeting people from different backgrounds. I can definitely attest to that. Um, but small class sizes, 15 to one student to professor ratio. Um, we are American accredited. So of course you can go to John Cabot, get that American degree and come back to the US just like I did. Um, but yeah, I'll touch on the campuses and uh, the tuition and all of that and the scholarships, of course. So a few things that kind of set us aside. Um, I think on-site learning and learning by doing can be summed up in, into experiential learning, um, you know, learning through your experiences. So Rome is such a good resource to have as a student. So um, the professors really like taking the students outside of class, going to the piazza, going to the museum, whatever it is, um, to actually learn through an experience. And that sticks with you, you know, not only for a test, but it just stays with you because you learned it. Um, and that's the best way in my in my opinion. Um, but it is American style learning environment, um, curriculum, GPA, all of that is exactly the same what you would be used to. Um, but we do have professors as well from all around the world. Um, they really reflect the student body in that way in that um, a lot of them from so many different backgrounds and so many of them are in Rome specifically to be teaching at John Cabot so very dedicated to making it a special experience. Um, yeah. So COVID is getting better, but it is a thing. And even this past fall and spring, we've been somewhat in person, um, having a hybrid model. And we think by even fall 2021, we're going to be a lot better. So if you're coming in fall 2022, we should be all good. Um, yeah. But we are in a uh, university, so it's not just all eating pasta and pizza, but uh, we have 14 majors and 19 minors. Um, we have a few support services for our students, as, our students because um, you do a lot of writing in a liberal arts institution. So I use the writing center quite a lot. Um, we have these, this is our uh, list of majors. Uh, I majored in communications and I studied uh, humanistic studies as my minor. Um, so we have this list as minors and then a few others like mathematics and philosophy. Yeah. So something that's big at John Cabot is our career services. So it's very common for students to get some professional experience before they even leave college. Um, and because of that, we have three career fairs every year where we invite some of these companies that we have partnerships with um, to the campus and you get to interact with them, see what they're looking for in an applicant, give them your resume, um, possibly get an interview. And as you can see, over 80% of the students who get an interview actually get the position. So um, that's a huge thing at John Cabot. We're very big into you know getting you some internships or some professional experience um, while you're still studying there. You can also work up to 20 hours a week with the visa that you get. So, yeah. We have uh, a lot of student-led clubs and organizations uh, because we're not a giant school. We put a lot into that. Um, we have clubs from newspaper club to theater society, um, all kinds of different clubs. I think it's what you bring to the table. Um, just like Rome, there's so many different things to do um, and you can't do all of them. So you got to kind of find what your hobbies are, what your interests are. Um, we do a lot of trips and activities as well. Um, activities are very ingrained in the Italian culture, you know, cooking classes, uh, language courses. And then we also have uh, some trips. We do day trips and even weekend trips to further places around Rome. Uh, we do have athletics as well. Uh, Soccer is our biggest sport, our biggest team there. They play against other Italian universities, have tournaments. A lot of people go and watch them. We have a cheerleading squad. And then we also have basketball, volleyball, and a few of the other smaller sports. Um, we have a full gym on campus as well. Um, but yeah, our tuition is just under 27,000 and that's for the entire year, including the health insurance and the meal plan. Um, and we do have our own merit-based scholarships, need-based scholarships, and uh, we do take the FAFSA. Uh, if you're looking at some external scholarships back home, um, we will look at those as well. Um, but yeah, as you can see at the bottom left, over 85% of our students um, do receive a scholarship from us. So it's very likely that you do get something to help out. Um, yeah. So our campus is like an urban campus. So a few buildings near each other, a few, about a few 
three, four minutes walking uh, within each other. And they're all on the river, so a very nice environment. Our Critelli campus is our newest building. Uh, some classrooms, our uh, president's office, admissions office is there. Uh, we have our Guarini campus, which is our oldest one. And this one has a lot of terraces, a lot of places to watch the sunset over Rome or study on the roof. Um, we have our auditorium, our library, um, lots of student lounge areas. And our Tiber campus is another short walk down the river. Um, we have our cafeteria, um, a lot of student service offices, and then our art studio. Um, Rome is a very artistic city, very inspirational city. I took my photography courses here, but uh, if you're into drawing or sculpting, painting, any of that, it's nice to have your own space. We do have our own housing, our own apartments. They're all apartment style. Um, in They all have 24-hour security, and um, you might have a few roommates, but you'll also have a small kitchen and maybe a small balcony. Um, but like I said, we have that full fitness center where you can do yoga classes and there's weight room, all of that. Um, no shortage of that. Applying is just like applying to any other American institution. Uh, we are on the Common App, then we have our own online application. Uh, we just need your transcripts, letters of recommendation, a personal essay, and an interview, most likely with me. Um, and then we've gone test optional because of COVID so far. So um, that's how we're doing things. Um, but that's my time. Um, thank you guys for joining. If you wanted to scan this QR code, um, it'll have everything I was just speaking about. But yeah, thank you. Leave that up for a second and I uh, want to thank you for presenting. And as uh, we leave that up for a, two or three seconds, we'll ask all the uh, reps to come back on cameras, turn or camera and turn on their microphones. So uh, we can do a quick little Q&A here. I get to play talk show host, which is always fun. And I'll have you answer in the same order that you presented. I'll turn off my video and share my screen here. And we'll have the first question, which is what one piece of advice would you give someone going through the college search process right now? Um, and let me, let me take care of British Columbia here. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> there we go. That should... Yep, Get that way. Where your camera Thanks. can come back on. We'll yep. start with the University of British Columbia. What one piece of advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Uh, so, anyone going through the college search process, um, a piece of advice that I would give is just uh, to do your research and take your time. And it's really important to, um, of course, focus on the academics and the program that is being offered, but also look at the other things that the university is offering because you are going to be living there for three to four years and you want to make sure that it's the right fit for you. Um, so doing the research and figuring out if the institution offers all of the sort of things that you're looking for um, in terms of your education. So in addition to the actual program, the other extracurriculars on campus housing, all of those things. Um, and of course the city, whether the city has the things that you're looking for as well. Falmouth University. Yeah, I would say that um, don't get too overwhelmed. I know this can be a very um, a stressful process, but if you're looking at international universities, um, we're all very connected. And if you can't find a specific program with one university, we're more than welcome to kind of assist you with what we know and to connect you to the representative from that other international university who can help you and guide you. Sure. Very university. Also, oh, go I ahead. Sorry. I say um, that students should look far and wide. You'll probably never have an opportunity again where you're able to look at opportunities across the world. Um, and don't be so afraid of it um, because it always works out well. And if it is a struggle to spend that amount of time overseas, um, make sure you do at least go for a semester or a year. You will never regret it. John Cabot University. Yeah, I would say um, just use the uh, admissions counselor or whoever it is that you're in touch with at the university. A lot of the times there's alumni and um, they have some really good information. And I know it might be weird as a high school student, you know, reaching out, but having a one-on-one -on -one with, you know, admissions counselor from the university could make a difference. So, yeah. We'll move on to a second question here. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? back up with University of British Columbia. Okay, so my favorite traditions on campus, um, at the Vancouver campus, it would be, uh, it's called Storm the Wall. It's actually North America's largest intramural event. 
event where it's a triathlon um, plus some other things, which is basically there's a 12 foot wall at the end of it all. So you're swimming, you're running, you're bicycling, and then you have to climb a 12 foot wall at the end. You can do it with teams or solo. So um, it's quite intense, really fun event on campus at the Vancouver campus and at the Okanagan campus. I would say homecoming is a um, quite a big event and um, one of my favorites. Balmet. Um, one of our favorite events is um, Freshers Week, where you have the opportunity to meet new students and sign up and register for different clubs and societies, um, and you're able to move in and register for classes. Macquarie. Um, we celebrate Conception Day, which is um, when the university was signed into being, um, and it's a week-long music and arts festival that happens in September, and it's always a lot of fun. John Cabot University. Yeah, we hold a, a gala every year for our upperclassmen, um, where you get to dress up really fancy and, you know, have some wine at the villa, and that looks over Rome, so it's very Italian, yeah. And I'll uh, take advantage of our time here to get a third question in, and this will be give an interesting or fun fact about your school, University of British Columbia. So UBC is the um, currently the first and only university in Canada to offer a degree in an Indigenous language. So I can't always pronounce it properly, but uh, it's a bachelor in, in Silchin. Yeah. Falmouth. So um, Cornwall is one of the locations for modern art. Um, there was four locations that um, housed modern art and that was New York, Paris, London, and St. Ives. And St. Ives is located in Cornwall. So, um, you know, having the School of Art starting in 1902 at Falmouth, um, that's just a big facilitator of modern art and we're very proactive and um, yeah, it's, it's just a beautiful location and, uh, you know, a best, a great place to, to do modern art. Macquarie University. Um, in honor of Earth Day, it is worth mentioning that the university was just ranked in the top 100 for um, sustainability globally, which is very cool. Awesome. And John Cabot University. Um, yeah, we're quite literally like right in the center of Rome, you know, we're walkable to, you can walk to the Vatican, you can walk to the Trevi Fountain, you can walk to the uh, Colosseum. So I think that's pretty, pretty cool. Well, thank you all for sharing the fun facts about your school and your favorite traditions and the advice for people going through the college search process right now. And of course, thank you for sharing all the great information about each of your institutions. I wanna thank our attendees for joining us. When you close this window, there'll be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was one of just many sessions being hosted. There's a session next week as well. Be sure to sign up for more if you've not done so already. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings. Strivescan.com slash RMACAC. Once again, thank you to our representatives for presenting during this session. Have a great rest of your Thursday. Take care. <laughs>